taking taking transit. We have developers that come in, like Shores even came in and talked about their project, the Golden Gate and Jones. And coming to those meetings, talking to the developers about how they're going to mitigate their traffic flows with their people, they're bringing their cars in. Because 90% of the buildings that are built in the city have parking garages. And I think it's important to bring in to when we have the developers here, bring those questions to the developers because it's their responsibility to mitigate the traffic flow of the people going in and out of their garages. Well, the other thing, just to, yeah. just well, to add on to that, is just there's some new... are impatient. They're, they're, they're not in a good mood. They're trying to get home. The streets are too small we for all the, the cars. Yeah. 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 Uh, we'll get one more question, and, question and then we can move. Yeah. Yeah. And we can yeah. move back to the front. Yeah, yeah. after the meeting, I'll get the information. People should be able to their hands and be recognized. I'm sorry, it's very in the back. Yeah, let's get you and then. Yeah, so I was going to ask if we could please move on and hear yeah, specific great. to the project you. because I would really like to hear more about Perfect. the project than just. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Manita Velasco from MTA. I actually have uh, Bradley and then also Rachel Hyde, who is a senior transportation planner who uh, was uh, with the project from the, from the inception of uh, the Tenderloin Bill Cycle Plan. So I'm going to. First of all, thank you for inviting us to this meeting, and I know we could always do a better job of doing public outreach. That's not something that we take very lightly, and so I know my boss in particular, Ed, says we need to do a better job of getting people involved and getting people's input back to do the project and then do that iteration so that when the project comes out and becomes implemented, it's something that the community recognizes and supports. So I'm very sensitive to that. I want to speak quickly for five minutes because I do want to hear the input from people. So I want to describe what this project is about. This project is about uh, Eddie and Ellis and making them two-way as much as we can carry it forward between uh, Polk Street and Market. Um, back in 2012, um, we took from this tender, tender millennial cycle and plan uh, a concept which is to make Ellis and Eddie two-way up to a certain point. There's phase one, which was already done in 2012, Ellis was made two-way from Pope all the way up to Jones, and then and Jones is where you'll you know, the you know, course of you can't go any further east uh, after that point. Uh, Leavenworth was also made, uh, sorry, Eddie was also made two-way starting at Leavenworth, so we came to two blocks of, of two-way between Leavenworth and Market in 2012. This particular project is to try to carry that two-way on Ellis from Jones all the way to Mason, and then also from Leavenworth so why is this why is this two way thing so important? So one of the things that uh, we heard from this initial uh, community effort was that the two lane uh, two way street uh, configuration was really generating a lot of speed for people. Uh, people are like trying to get around. If somebody slow behind you, they try to get around past the other lane. Um, the other thing is it contributes to the two way feel of the street. You go to the south market. You have all these two-way streets that are four lanes wide, and it does feel like a freeway at times. Um, on, on Ellis and Eddie, when we made this week's two-way over here, it, it worked a, lo a lot better than what it used to, when it used to have two lanes in one direction and none in the other. The, the other thing with, with making street two-way is that um, when you have loading zones, white zones, or shuttle zones, or people getting dropped off uh, in front of the senior center, for example, and your street's one way that direction, uh, and your building happens to be on the left side, what happens then is when the shuttle or taxi or anybody else wants to drop people off, they pull over to the curb, but then they have to drop off people into the traffic lane. So because you only have that on one lane. So it, by making it two-way, you'll actually be able to drop off people directly to the curb instead of having to like step out to the street. And one of the weird things that we, we noticed over at uh, Ellis and Taylor um, was that come in and drop off their passengers and you have an elderly lady with a cone with a vest doing traffic control herself to block up the lane so that people can get off. And that's something that's not ideal, something you really should take care of. So we want people to actually be loading on the right side of the street to get off of the sidewalk directly. Uh, that includes anybody who has a wheelchair or any mobility devices. Um, the, other, the other thing with making the street two-way is that uh, with a one-way one street, if you're turning from a one-way street into a one-way street, 
guess what, what happens when, when that happens, uh, when, when people make that turn, they know they have the full width of the street to turn. So they turn really fast when they do that. They don't do that when the street's two way. Because when the street's two way, there's only one receiving lane that they can go into and they can't like cheat and then cut the turn. So that's the other thing uh, that's what uh, doing. You had a question about Taylor. Taylor is very important to us as well. And part of this project is gonna put in countdown signals at Eddie and Taylor and Ellis and Taylor. And in a matter of months, Turk and Taylor is also under construction. We're gonna be adding pedestrian signals there. So our goal, the mayor's goal, my, my boss's goal is to cover the entire city, in particular the Tenderloin with these countdown signals. So that people know when, when to cross the street and not have to depend on a three second red, yellow, green to be able to figure out when to cross. Uh, the other benefit of this project is that they, it's been adding bulbs at certain locations to shorten the crossing distance and also to uh, reduce the turns by which people make those turns. So a couple of those bulbs, of course, probably already know in front of the diagonally across the police station, there's there's a bulb there. Um, Turk and Jones, does that have a bulb? Yeah. Right. Maybe and Jones has it. I'm not sure about it. No, I don't think it's true. There's there's others on, on Hyde that we've done, and then on Eddie and Leavenworth, as part of this project, we're also adding in bulbs at the uh, there's also a question about funding. So this is a federally funded project. Like I said, the, the, the unfortunate thing about the plan getting adopted by the board back in 2007, 2008, is that just because something's adopted doesn't mean there's the money behind it to do the project. So what's been happening is we've been uh, opportunistic about what we can do with the money that we do have. So we've implemented, like I said, phase one was implemented. <coughs> once we got the money to do it, and the infrastructure was done. Uh, we've been adding pedestrian signals again. This is the, the last sort of keystone from that plan, just to continue the two way all the way up to, to, uh, to Mason. Um, and it's the contract cost of this is around $600,000. <coughs> but it, like I said, it includes, it's, it's packaged with pedestrian movements at Ellis and Taylor, Eddie and Taylor, as well as the bulbs at Eddie and other ones. So <coughs> let me just, uh, in terms of timeline, Um, we tried to do a public hearing, we rushed a public hearing, this was a shortcoming on the project's part, on the project manager, manager's part in particular, that's me. Uh, we tried to do a public hearing back in September, which wasn't without going through the full uh, public process. So we are slowing down, and so we want to get as much input as possible from the community so we can incorporate as much of that as possible. So what we would, what we're looking to do is to go to public hearing in either January or February of next year. And construction of this project will begin in March or April. So that, that's what we're looking at. I'm open to answering questions. Um, you talked really nicely about changing traffic lane. What in the place is it going to do about the police department? Yes. And it insists on double parking. <coughs> right. And I think all your lovely eastbound traffic. We'll yep. be putting it in the westbound lane. Got an right. answer. And which will turn all the people who take taxi cabs from this building and other buildings into skyrocketing cab fares. Uh, so, do uh, uh, you have any plans? Yes. Which part? Yes, uh, I've met with Captain is it Ewins. Uh, before that, I met with the other captain before that, and the first project uh, came before. So, I met with that captain. And the same issue has come over and over again. Uh, there's also this little church called Glide that does something similar. Um, I normally double parks on Sunday, fortunately. Right. <laughs> Please do a double park 24 hours a day. Right. So I don't know, you got your long term uh, So you, you know that at some point, Eddie and Ellis will be three lanes in one direction with parking on both sides. So the street width is still there to have three lanes. So you'll have one lane for the double parking, and then you would still have room to do one eastbound lane and one westbound lane. So there, there's room to do that physically within the street. Is, is it possible, the reason I'm asking sure. it, right now, because they have that entire lane to park in, right. they have a bad habit of not parking as close as they yes. could, yes. taking up the entire lane. Yes. And I'm yes. Concerned, I mean, I love the I, three lanes I love. Right. Um, but my concern is getting your buses not just yours, but all these tour buses. Right. Um, 
they call them high tech buses that we have way down here. Right. And trucks we got way down here. Yeah. Getting them stuck on yeah. a lead line right. blocking the eastbound side. Right. So right. is there anything we can do project planning wise yeah. to uh, possibly mark off an area along that stretch in front of the station? The officers know they stay over there. Yes. So your buses and trucks <coughs> go over here. That's, that's exactly what we plan to do based on the comments we got from the public hearing, which is to demarcate where the double parking lane would be. Because right now what's happening is we have two extra wide lanes on both Eddie and Ellis. So what the police department does, or what anybody with double park does, is they center themselves in that extra wide lane. If we strike the lane the way it used to be, when it used to be three lanes, you can actually double park and still leave room for buses to get across. Uh, that's so, my concern. Yeah. Um, so we plan to do that, yeah, both for any in front of the police department and on glide to accommodate that situation that happens on Sundays and special events that they have. Um, it does mean that people will have to go slower during, during those times because does get pretty narrow. Um, but part of the reason why people are speeding right now is because those lanes are like 15 feet wide, which is like wider than a freeway. A freeway lane is 12 feet. What you have on Eddie and Ellis right now is 15 feet. So that's why you're having this, this speeding problem. Now, I'm not saying just going two, two ways is going to solve all those problems, but it's a step in that direction. And we obviously need still, to, we still need to work with the police department to get the enforcement aspect of it. But that's that's currently what you have out there right now. So yeah, where well, they have that, the, 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 the convention, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. <clears throat> the convention going on right there, that really backs me. Right, so once a year, once we always year, look forward yeah. to Oracle <laughs> shutting down Taylor, me, <laughs> Farrell, oh, and Ellis. Yeah. So um, are there any plans of making the uh, cost impact? But the but there's a lot of people that do ride down the sidewalks yeah. and you have to get out of their way. Right. So 
Yeah. So I, I think one of the, one of the uh, goals with the, doing these bike lanes that are on the street with the buffer is to cut down on people who do it that because a lot of people do that because they don't feel comfortable riding on the street. And so by, ded by dedicating space for them, the buffer, the hope is to encourage those people to get off on the sidewalk and actually ride on the street where they belong. Right. One of the problems they have with one-way streets and bicycles Bicycles want to go the other direction. That's when they go down the sidewalk. Yes. I know we have that a lot here on Hill Street. Yes. And one of the worst offenders of going down the sidewalk on your bicycle is the police. I mean, they do it on a regular basis on that street. I mean, I mean, I would, I would direct those comments. I mean, we don't have the enforcement ability, so I would definitely direct those comments at the Tenderloin police station because that is a problem. I mean, that's been brought up, and it's our um, so I'm also going to talk to you so, uh, well, I think that uh, as far as the bicycle is concerned, uh, as long as uh, somehow, I know you're not involved with this guy, as long as when you bring something from the bicycle people, they try to bring something from the bicycle collision. Or let me know how to bring something from the bicycle collision. That way we can get both sides to make sure it's a meeting. So um, the traffic that is using those two lanes, where do you expect it to go to? Uh, that's a good point. So, so Ellis, uh, on the section that we're converting, is two lanes that way, I would say. Two ways, uh, two lane westbound, and the other one is two lane eastbound. And so what we're basically doing, in effect, is we're just switching. Them. So if you add up the number of lanes on Ellis and Eddie, uh, they'll still be the same number of lanes. They're just on different streets now. So right now you have, if you consider Ellis and Eddie as one street, and this is a wide median, the block. So you have two lanes going westbound, two lanes going eastbound, it's gonna be the same. So I guess maybe I didn't ask my question effectively. So once those streets take longer for people to get from point A to point B, that traffic is gonna, the people that want to go on a freeway <coughs> type street, right. where do you see that traffic moving to? What streets is it specific, so specifically? <laughs> yeah, so, so the forecasting is that it's not that this is going to create congestion. The, the street does have a lot of extra capacity, both streets. And evidence of that is the double parking that happens. Like people wouldn't double park if they didn't think people had the capacity to handle it. So and that's, that's what's happening. Yeah, but you can't double park. You won't be able to double park anymore. Right. So but that, those are services that people use. It's a fire department, it's the police department, right. it's a, emergency vehicles, right. it's people coming for senior services to the right. senior and disabled, yeah. it's police yeah. work. Do you know that this street is continuously in a state of construction and being torn up? Because for one project or another, they're tearing it up to put microwave cable under the ground, right. changing, it's always torn up. And then there's service vehicles for that. Right. So one, one thing we could take a look at is if, if you give us input on where this double parking is happening, we can increase the number of yellow loading zones wherever that's happening. <coughs> that way you can allow people to actually get next to the curb instead of double parking. It's pretty much out. Yeah. Also, it's been 40 years, it's been 40 years I've been here, and I haven't seen so much of the disaster out here. The only time there was a, 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 a car pack disaster was when they go into the ball game, and it's all going in one direction, headed for the ballpark. Other than that, you know, there's not really a freeway going on down here, really. No, there isn't. And, it's a, and at the same time, that you just mentioned, you, 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 you cut off some other services doing this. Uh, I, forgive me for saying that, I don't mean to be sound weird here, but I'm thinking that, that everybody seems to be jumping in on the bandwagon of spend, spend, spend. Just because there's money there to be given to use. And just the opportunity to get their hand on some money. I think the city of y'all doing that, you really should, really should be concerned about the people that's here and anywhere else you may be doing your business at. Because this is, the lives of people are more important than your pockets. That's a fair criticism. I don't know how to address it. I mean, this is a transportation project. We've got transportation no, 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 funding. No, 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 no. You don't want to address it. 